Hi, folks. Chris Voss here from the ChrisVossShow.com. Hey, coming here with another great uh, review of a game. So this will be for our gaming channels on the ChrisVossShow.com. It'll also be on our Chris Voss Gaming podcast. You can go to ChrisVossGaming.com and see that, and you can follow both of our podcasts across the interwebs. Uh, we do a lot of interviews over on Chris Voss Gaming for gaming developers that come on the show, uh, review of games, et cetera, et cetera, and uh, different products for the gaming um Community, if you will. <laughs> so there. Uh, so anyway, we're going to talk about one of my favorite games of all time, Destiny, uh, made by the developer Bungie. And uh, this is their first big DLC launch they're launching, the Destiny 2 Shadowkeep DLC. And uh, it's pretty interesting what they are launching. So let's talk about what I think about it. Now, like I said, I've been uh, a fan of Destiny for uh, since its beginning. I've been a year one player since almost the very first moment. Um, and I've loved the game. I've been very addicted to it. I played the hell out of it. Uh, I was really in love with Destiny 1. Uh, Destiny 2 had a lot of initial problems that drove a lot of players from the game, including myself. Uh, and the changes were completely unnecessary. I mean, all most people expected out of D2 was uh, on new maps, new reskins of stuff, new new kind of uh, content or missions, but we all kind of knew all the guns are going to be reskinned, all the outfits would be reskinned. You know, uh, you can you can feel the archetypes of D1 guns even now in, in guns that come out. So that's all we wanted, but instead I, Bungie and or Activision decided to turn everything on its head just for uh, seemingly the purpose of just selling and well, the game's totally changed. We didn't want a totally changed game. You know, you learn this in business. You don't take your whole business model and turn it upside down just to say you turn it upside down and try and resell it you make incremental changes to your product and that's where Bungie really failed with Destiny 2's initial launch they uh, did save the game with uh, Forsaken and Forsaken was a great launch uh, it also taught Bungie in my opinion a lot of different things about keeping activities busy like they do at, at, at uh at uh, the other games that are out there, Apex Legends. Uh, there's the other game that uh, Fortnite that's really popular with people. Uh, constantly having activities, constantly having new content, different things, new challenges come up. Having a whole agenda where you're constantly bringing stuff up uh, seemed to influence Bungie to you know start doing this sort of stuff. And they've gotten better and better and better over the years. So they have launched Shadowkeep, which is uh, an interesting thing. Now, what's kind of funny... <laughs> One thing that was kind of funny is I've been longing for a return to D1. Most people love D1. In fact, after D launch failed its launch, a lot of players like me were going back to D1 and playing it because it was just a better experience. Crucible was a better experience, everything else. And uh, there still is this love of D1 among D2 players, Destiny players. Anybody who played D1 you know, always talks about, like, I really love D1. Um, and, and D2 is something that I think players still even to now struggle with. So, um, for months I've talked about how, wouldn't it be great if Bungie would make a remastered version of D1? Like you go play all the old fun D1 stuff and it'd be remastered. And everyone's like, yeah, I'd buy that. That'd be awesome. Well, <laughs> I don't know if Bungie was listening to me or just, this just makes sense actually. It's because in making a perfect homage to D1. Uh, one of the other things I talked about, if Bungie's listening as well, is I talked for a long time about how, uh, for years I've talked about this, it would be really cool, you know, we kind of have this after-apocalypse sort of landscape and activities and, you know, all the buildings and everything is after, you know, everything went to hell with the civilization of us trying to populate these planets. I'd love to see a pre, like a pre-destiny that would show how, you know, life was like in our wonderful community and, you know, we're going to the moon, we're digging on the moon. Oh, it's all great. And then, you know, you see the moments where everything goes off the rail and they dig up the hive and all that crap. Um, so that would be fun, Destiny, if you had decided to make that. But let's get into the Shadow Keep review. Uh, this is going to be a review that's, uh, we're three days into the game. I think I've played the hell out of it over the past two days uh, with as less sleep as I possibly can do. Uh, we don't have the raid out, but we'll be doing the review of the raid and the whole arcing thing in an update in a, in a post once the raid drops. I like what I see so far, so I'm hoping that uh, what Bungie, the choices they made are going to be just as good in the raid, and uh, I feel pretty confident about that, but, you know, we'll see, and we'll do a post, for so watch for that if you haven't gotten a chance to, subscribe to the show. So, 
basically what D1 has done, and this is brilliant on their part, they have built a perfect homage or almost perfect homage to D1. I mean, they could still, you know, there's a lot still they could do, and there's a lot of promises about what they're going to do, and that may play out as it wells. Uh, so basically, you return to the moon. Now, if you're a D1 player, you know what this means. Everything came out of the moon pretty much. Uh, for the most part, you awaken the hive and uh, all that sort of good stuff. And there was all sorts of content on the moon. I spent so many hours on the moon. It was uh, crazy. So uh, you're returning to the moon to fight the new, more powerful hive. You're fi finding discoveries. You're finding new things that are at the base and core of why the hive are on the moon and, and what goes on behind that getting deeper into the lore and the story and everything else. But I got to tell you, being a Destiny 1 player, having Bungie return us to the moon, having Bungie return us to places like the Cosmodrome, and we're actually playing the remastered maps and everything else of uh, of the thing. I don't even know if they redid them, but they uh, they appear to be either remastered or redone. But it, it basically feels the same. And it's just it's such a, a heartwarming return to something that we really loved. And I, I think probably one of the most uh, smartest plays Bungie could do with this new launch. Um, it's... Um, it's really just wonderful. It's like you, know, you play through it and you get goosebumps. You're like, wow, I'm playing in D1 again, my favorite game, the game that I loved. And it's probably really good, too, because it mixes the D2 and kind of takes away some of the sting that players still feel of D2 being launched. So uh, let's talk about some of the other things. You, you really feel like you go back in the game. I, I really love that. Uh, initially, when you go through the story, uh, Bungie's been getting better at this. There's no more long four-hour stories you got to hammer through just to uncrack the game and be able to play other parts of it. Uh, they've been off that for a while, but they did a really good job this time, I think, of being able to not make long story missions that you got to you got to complete them all to play the game. Um, and you can jump in and out of the story missions, which is really nice. And some of the story missions are just kind of scrummy where you can have other players and they're in public areas. Uh, some, you know, you got to go on some missions to play, but they're not long, extensive, boring missions. Uh, they're not the sort of missions that we saw that were horrible, like with the Red War and, and uh, the Osiris stuff, which uh, just uh, people hated that. Um, I love how they've set it up where you can get in, you can get out, you can kind of do them at your own pace. You can have fun. You can enjoy the game. You're not locked into like, you can't do anything until you complete our story. Um, so I like how they set it up. I like how they, it's very easy to consume. You don't feel grinded. Uh, and you just want to keep playing the game because you're not burnt out doing some stupid story and you can easily go play with your friends. Like if your friend called, Hey, you want to go play some gamut real quick? Oh yeah, cool, man. I'm in the story sequence but you know I, i'm in a place i can go play with the end you know i can come back to that later i think that just makes for a better experience for community and everything else um the crucible was the big thing that drove a lot of people from the game and i really really love bungie what you did with crucible you still need a lot of work but i love what you've done so far you've I used to play Crucible eight hours a day, and I love Clash. And anybody who's good loved Clash. One of the things that people hate, 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 hate in Destiny 2 is the fact that Iron Banner, which used to be the premier uh, sort of game place to play for most of the community. I mean, if you were ultra premier, you played in Trials. But for most of the community, we loved playing uh, Iron Banana, Iron Banner. <laughs> we call it the banana, but you know, that's a D1 thing. Uh, so Iron Banner was awesome, but anybody who was a really good player loved playing Iron Banner Clash and hated Iron Banner Control. Uh, somewhere in the failure of launch of D2, uh, Bungie had to create, you know, uh, Iron Banner that was just solely, uh, based upon team shooting and, and cruise and control and people hated it. I still hate it to this day. I can't stand Iron Banner Control. It's the one of the biggest failures that Bungie ever did in driving people from the game. The other thing that drove people from the game was the team shooting element of D two and a lot of other things actually. But um, what with getting the pinnacle weapons was also something that I'm so glad that Bungie is getting rid of. Um, the pinnacle weapons, all they did was make T uh, Bungie's team shooting 
uh, thing and, and uh, team farming uh, uh, and algorithms made it so you just, if you're a solo player, if you're just playing alone, uh, if you can't team up, or you don't have a team, or you just, you just want to go and have fun, man, if your friends aren't around, uh, all you do is get farmed and wrecked by team shooting players that are stack teams that come against you. Uh, it created a, a horrible pattern in destiny where anybody who's worth their salt or, and, or just doesn't want to be farmed actually dips out of every time there's a crucible, um, there's a crucible, uh, farming team, stack team that shows up. Uh, and it just, it just creates a mess for the environment and the community. You know, here, here's the thing. And I, I'm glad a bungee got rid of pinnacle weapons. This is really smart in their part. The problem is, is the very small group of elite players that are really good at the game. Uh, they go and get the pinnacle weapons. These guys are already good at the game. They're already going to top the leaderboards, and they're already going to farm the crap out of players and make them hate the game. Giving them pinnacle weapons on top of that is just stupid. I mean, if anything, you should give pinnacle weapons to the people who are really bad at the game so that they can have a chance to actually fight the bigger guys. But I, I, that would be hard to take and work out. So um, getting rid of the pinnacle weapons is super important. Making these guys even better, all you do in, in early D2 was just feel like a piece of meat being farmed by stack teams doing team shooting. Uh, it took away the individualist uh, sort of operation where as an individual you could rock and roll you could kick ass and if you couldn't form a team or make a bunch of friends on destiny which failed at at <laughs> clanning and everything else they still fail at being able to build these communities um the, er, until i think shadow keep everything has really been anti-community in the way they've built things um and i'd love to sit down with destiny sometime and show them how what they're doing wrong um but they've moved away from a lot of that with Shadow Keep, so I definitely have loved that. Uh, there is now, just like D1, a Crucible where you can go play Clash. That's been one of the biggest complaints I've heard from players in Destiny that they can't just go play Clash. They get forced into playing Control and other game modes that they fucking hate. Um, give your customers choice, Bungie. Duh makes fucking sense um they also have said that their algorithm makes it so that it's harder to get stacked up against individual teams if you're playing uh on your own uh and uh and hopefully that's something will help me return to the game uh when it comes to crucible uh since d2 i've avoided crucible i hate playing crucible i hate getting farmed by teams i hate getting farmed by pinnacle weapons uh it just ruined the game you ba basically Bungie's, one of Bungie's biggest failures over the years has constantly been listening to streamers, listening to their high-end uh, 1%, 10%, rich-get-richer base, and moting the game to them. Well, unfortunately, they've driven so many people off the game that are casual players, they feel like they have to uh, appeal to those people because... Um, those are the people who you know regularly play the game and are addicted to the game. Well, the problem is, is you wouldn't drive so many people from the game. You wouldn't have made Fortnite such an epic success if you would have just kept the principles of D1 in play and not flipped them for D2. Uh, so by, by taking and drawing this back to where the individual can have a chance again, uh, people can choose Clash if they want, or they just focused on shooting people. One of the biggest problems you have with control is... People don't play the objective. So if you're trying to play the objective, especially in Iron Banner, you get really angry at the game and other players in the community uh, because they don't play the objective. They go play Clash when it's when it's Control. Why? Because no one fucking likes Clash or Control that's any good. So that's why. Anyway, uh, kind of got off in a little segue there, but uh, basically... Um, they fixed Crucible, and I think I like it a lot better. We're going to kind of see the long term of it and how it plays. Uh, most people seem to like the changes that are out there. I think more and more Bungie needs to make a segment of uh, Crucible where in every game mode there is an individual freelance join. Uh, I would really like to see that because I, I get tired of playing against teams. It's really old, and and it's it's just not fair. It's not fun. And people leave the game. And that will bring people to the game, I think, Bungie, if you quit driving people away. So they're making some really good choices with Shadowkeep. I love what they're doing there. The D1 feel going back is 
is awesome. Uh, the other thing I liked is their ability to farm better roles. They've put a uh, chest next to Eris Morn. They brought her back. There's the Lectern of Enchantment. Uh, and you're able to random roll farm by getting bounties and going doing them. And you can get rolls of different things. I love the Menagerie. The Menagerie has been a great experience. Uh, when you play activities, you can even get these sort of bounties out of chests and activities that you do. Um, so they just kind of encourage you or give you give you a way to have more control of the game to get the random rolls that you want. And I love that. I love that about Menagerie where you can, I, hey, I want to I want to go grind for a specific gun. I, you know, I can't grind quite for the role, but I can kind of grind for what I'm looking for on it. And that just makes it more fun. You feel like you control the game a whole lot more. And that's really important as well as a consumer for any product. Uh, the new guns are very cool. The redesigns are really cool. Going back to the Cosmonauts, really cool. I like that. Um, and it, the game is so content rich now. It's just awesome. Uh, there's a lot of different things that they are uh, taking and doing, and I'm hoping that Steam can reinvigorate the PC base. The Activision uh, base on Battle.net really died hard. When they issued the free version of D2, people uh, loaded into the game on, on PC and signed up and tried the game, and there just wasn't enough quality in what they were being offered to get them to stay the game and pony up the money. Um, given it was free, but we created like 10 clans overnight on PC, and within, I don't know, three or four months of the cons content, being, content being consumed or the free being consumed, uh, people just didn't stay with the game. They left. And that's probably one of the things that contributed to Activision saying, we can't do this. So I'm hoping that Steam is going to be a great PC reinvigoration of the base, get people to the game. The free version they have of New Light, uh, that thing can be really awesome, hopefully to draw players to the game. And, of course, they have the options of being more in the community than they were with Battle.net Activision launch of PC. Um, so I, I really, really like what I'm seeing so far on a lot of different facets as well. There's... Uh, a lot of different things they have put forth that they're going to be doing with the future roadmap of Shadowkeep. I like what uh, Bungie has put forth here. Uh, they've got uh, different seasons, of course, they're taking and doing. Uh, the seasonal update is free for all players, which is really nice. They're coming out with the uh, Garden of Salvation raid launch on October 5th. The Vex offensive activity begins the season of dying. Uh, there's going to be, let's see, Hero and Legend, Nightmare Hunts, uh, Master Nightmare Hunts, Iron Banner, Exotic Quest for Leviathan's Breath Bow, and Festival Lost, of course, in October. PvP modes will be coming out, something called Momentum Control, Shadowkeep Dungeon Launch. Uh, I've been loving the dungeon. I like the dungeon things. Those are fun. It's a three-man raid, basically, so yeah, get some fun with that. Exotic Quest for Divinity, Trace, Rifle. In the November, there'll be a First Raid Challenge and an uh, Vex Offensive. So uh, Bungie's gotten really good, and I like this, Bungie, about uh, making it so there's plenty of content there's plenty of new activities you know they're just not launching a dlc and being like well we'll see you guys in three months or six months or whatever um they're 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 keeping it a fun and uh activity rich uh so let's talk about what i didn't like about shadow keep so far um and it's kind of this is uh, uh Bungie sometimes gives communities challenges to change the game, and in doing so, it does take the community a little bit of while to get it, but one of the biggest challenges is when it confuses um, casual players. So the one downside of Shadowkeep is the Armor 2.0. It's very confusing to players. It's annoying to people who have built great outfits. I kind of get what... Bungie's kind of trying to do it does give us activity to grind for new outfits and stuff i don't know why they couldn't just you know re-roll everything at, at uh, version 2.0 uh but i imagine they want us to go grind for more outfits and get the new gear and blah 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 um the community's going to adapt to it it's nothing i think that's too big to overcome but i'm finding a lot of people are just really confused that it's very what i like to call non-intuitive which is what we look for when we review products as to how easy it is for the consumer to adopt it, adapt it, understand it, and utilize it. And right now I'm seeing a lot of confusion with that. Uh, there's a lot of different menu items that 
Bungie has added and different things, and some of it might be a little bit overloaded, but we'll see what the community does with it. Um, the Nightfall is really poorly non-intuitive as well. There's uh, multiple Nightfalls. It's confusing how to use it. It's very... It's very not clear. I mean, even players like me who've been in D1, we're all sitting around the D1, going, our players going, what the fuck is going on? I don't understand this. Um, if you're confusing D1 players that have been playing since D1, mm, you may want to rethink about what you're doing or how you're delivering it because that's the problem with non-intuitive issues. Uh, those are the only two main things that really stuck out at me. Uh, there's some beautiful new guns. There's an interesting uh, rocket launcher that's out there that's uh, it's pretty much a die for. Uh, I love it. I love the design of it and everything that Bungie put into it. It is called the Deathbringer rocket launcher. And it's really neat uh, what they did with it and a lot of fun. And there's a lot of other fun stuff they put in. And people seem to like the design of everything so far. The content of Shadowkeep is it looks kind of like a mixture of a Chinese lost city, uh, very doomish. Uh, alien castles kind of on the moon. The new enemies are very cool looking, uh, if not rehashed. I mean, you know, but they, they made them look cool. And uh, there's different elements of when you go through missions that kind of remind you of the raid, the initial raid from uh, the Crota raid. And, of course, Crota's in there. And and uh, who else? We've got Gaul. It's kind of like a, a, a hallmark back to everything else. So just a great homage. So, uh, overall, I love the game. I love what they did it i love what they built so far we're going to see long term how uh crucible weighs out if it drink, brings people back to the game wants to play crucible if people like me end up playing crucible it will definitely be a win for bungie because they need to bring the community back bungie needs to quit listening to top tier players they need to listen to casual players top tier players keep getting bungie in trouble and Players know it. We complain about it all the time that you guys just listen to the top tier players. Uh, when Bungie launched the EP, they made the EP harder because top tier players told them to, and then no one could complete the game, and they had to go dial it back. There's lots of different instances of that throughout the D2 experience where Bungie is not listening to casual player and therefore alienate him, and that's where they're failing on a massive basis uh, up to uh, Forsaken, and even then, they're you know they still keep. Uh, having their own little gaffes. But overall, I love the game. I love what Bungie's doing. I think they're working really hard to make a better thing. The launch was an uh, epic fail of embarrassment. We wrote about that on the Chris Foss show. Uh, Bungie, yeah, 24 hours to clean up your shit and get it launched or do a beta or you know do anything. But Jesus, you had so many people that wanted to see that launch. And the launch was just, uh, just a poor shit show of a mess. In fact, most people walked away from the game. I'm not sure if they came back, but I know a lot of my friends just were like, fuck this, I'm going to go to work, I'm going to do something else, I don't care about this game, this is stupid. Um, so, it, just a dumb thing to do on a product launch. Uh, get it right, or, or go home, I guess, I don't know. Um, so anyway, overall, I love the game. I'm going to give it 8 out of 10 stars. Uh, like I said, the only two things that I think were downside is some of the non-intuitive confusion of the Nightfall and the Armor 2.0. It just seems like something that really didn't have to be done um, you know, Bungie, you really need to get the fact that we just want new activities, new maps, new whatever. Try not to screw with our game. I do like how they've nerfed everything down, uh, the pinnacle weapons and everything, so everyone's on the same level. And that really comes down to you actualizing yourself um, in your own skill level as opposed to, well, somebody has a gun, so they're better than you. Um, when maybe they aren't, or maybe they are, and they're just now they're ten times better than you, and you're just you're just farming meat, uh, and no one likes to be farming meat. So you know people like to excel in their own thing. So anyway, kudos to Bungie. Uh, overall, I'm really happy with it. I love what they've done with it. It's a great load of content. Eight out of ten stars I give it. Um, and uh, I think the community is going to adapt to the Armor 2.0. They're going to figure out the Nightfalls and how to beat them. That's what this community does. Uh, they're pretty brilliant at, at even coming up with stuff that Bungie didn't think of. So I'm sure they'll uh, get through it. It's just initially... I, I, I'd stay three, and I'm still hearing players go, I don't understand what's going on with this thing. 
Um, so you might want to take a look at that. But the con it's really content rich right now in the game. It's the best time to play Destiny 2. There's so much stuff to do. You can't even choose from all the stuff or do everything. I suppose you could if you just don't sleep. But I think it's great because players have a lot of choices. They have a lot of different things they can do with their friends and everything else. And I hope Steam is going to just really bring in a lot of great player base to the PC thing. I'm really crossing my fingers and hoping that's going to happen. Anyway, guys, thanks for tuning in to the Chris Foss Show and Chris Foss Gaming Podcast. Be sure to subscribe to both iTunes, Google Play, uh, Spotify, every place on the internet you can think of. We are out there as well. Be sure to watch for my raid review coming up when that launches. Uh, we'll give you some ideas on what we think about that and what Bungie has done. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.